Boys, what is going on? So today we have a BMW X4. Uh, we're gonna be doing the front two doors and the full windshield in ceramic. And then we're also gonna be putting another windshield strip on this one. We got three for three. So for those that ask if I ever do sun strips or visors or eyebrows, I do. They're just not super common. And so all of a sudden you just get a whole bunch of them. So we're gonna be doing one of those today. Um, we're going to be doing that over the uh, windshield that we put in. So that way we don't have a nice ugly line. And I think, I think we're going to be good to go. Where's my headphones? Should be there. All right. How y'all doing? No, there's no headphones. Notifications. Is it enabled? It is enabled. Oh no! What changed in between today and the other day? Finally, I catch you on the live smiling face. Oh, of course you have to refresh it and then it works. I just did an extra and say, okay, all right, we're good now. Sorry, if I don't have you guys buzzing in my ear, then it just, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Uh, we are doing good. Finally get to catch a log. Welcome. I ordered some carbon ceramic tint. I'm hoping it's better than MK Brothers. <laughs> Where'd you get it from? Ceramic. Did it? Better than yeah yeah yeah. So I that MK MK Brothers was uh was the dyed film that I messed around with. That's the Amazon Prime video I did a while back. Just did an X3 on Saturday. I love the X4s. The X4s and the X6. You got that like swooping back right there. I like these. They're fun. Do you think it's easier to bottom load? It makes the uh, the installation easier. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely makes the installation easier. The challenge is always the, the s removing the sweeps. So if you can remove the seals, um, then you could do it on, on any vehicle. Um, but there's some that make it damn near impossible to remove. And then there's some you have to remove the full door panels. But, you know, I like to think there's a good balance in between the difficult ones and the hard ones where, you, you know, if you want to make it easier on yourself for some of them, just like pull back on the panel, pop out the sweep. You can do that on a fair amount of cars, but I don't do it um, because that's not really how I learn. So there's not a whole lot of that. Not a whole lot of that going on here, but whatever way floats your boat. Let me, uh, okay, so we need this window and this window. Cool. I gotta figure out my audio too. Uh, I wonder if there's a way to refresh it. Is it hard to remove seals on a Volkswagen P? I have, see, that's what I don't know, because I don't do it. But I know when you get into um, some of the foreign vehicles, like BMW, Mercedes, uh, VW, um, some of them, actually quite a few of them, I've seen you need to remove door panels and stuff. So there's a group. Uh, bottom loading window tinners on Facebook. I would highly recommend joining that one and they have a whole bunch of people Helping other people figure out what to do to remove door panels. So really really good Facebook group Alrighty, um, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this one So we got a little bit of work not a crazy amount of work, but this thing's been running for a hot minute It was hard choosing between carbon ceramic and ceramic extreme. What's the difference? <laughs> so carbon, that, the carbon ceramic has both carbon and ceramic. Ceramic extreme might be a dyed ceramic, but doesn't mean necessarily it's got less heat rejection. Just that maybe they get their coloring differently. I don't know. Sounds like the name, though. I like how some companies use the name carbon in their, in their name. And then there's no carbon in it. They just say, oh, well, it's got a carbon look to it. Nice. Okay. Let's check this out. Go 
GoPro. Sweet. I love using the shank. You and me both. Glad to hear it. Yeah, these things are awesome. So, I got a question for you guys, actually. No, actually, let's, let's do that after the fact. Oh, yeah, we need, a, we need the key. So we need to lower both of those down. No, don't demonetize me. Thank you. Radio's always there. Looking to take away my ad revenue, which is pointless on a live stream. <laughs> so, <laughs> lows. We don't, I needed this stuff real quick. So, uh, turns out there's a few different types of it. You guys know tuck tape. Well, Lowe's has their own version of tuck tape, so. Glass Aid News? Uh, that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna email them this morning and find out what's going on. That's a good reminder. Let me, let me send one. Then hopefully we can find out by the end of the stream. I used tape this weekend. Oh my God, amazing. That's good to hear. You know, it's one of those dumb things. I say dumb because like, I've heard about it forever and I just, I just don't do it because you don't have to. And then I just started doing it more and you're like, I'm like, you know what? It does help. It does help a lot. When you're trying to go for the 100%, if you're going for the 99, 98, 99%, but when you're going for the 100, taping everything, it makes that little difference there. Uh, have you tried any different seal tools? Uh, yeah, I tried the Expel one, but I only gave it like two cars worth of tries and I just didn't get along with it. It's thick. That's what I didn't like, like about it. So it's like a big metal food tray that you put on the sill and then it'll help like bend everything down. But it's like when you're trying to wedge that into something like this and it's straight too. So some door panels have a little natural curve to them too. So like when you're trying to wedge it into something like this, I just didn't like how it was pressing up against the glass. But I didn't take much time. It was kind of like a couple of quick impressions and I'm just like, I don't get how people are using this, so. Other than that, it was really like the shank because my tucking style we used to be with, uh, I don't know if I have it on hand. It used to be with like a triangle tool. It used to be with the easy reach. And I was like, hey, dude, what's the difference? There's no difference. Is it, what, this little stupid thing versus this little stupid, like. But there is, there's actually a big difference there. Let me roll that one up. Oh yeah, I was gonna finish taping that one. Why am I taping the door panel? Because um, the carpet shield doesn't always stick. And what I noticed was sometimes this more aggressive tape is gonna stick still without leaving residue. So, what it's also doing is giving the carpet shield something to cling to. So, you don't have to put this much, um, but I actually literally just had a Ram TRX. I was uh, fixing one of his windows because it got busted out. Uh, he's got stitching on the panels. 
And I know for a fact that if you get that stitching wet, it'll cause the panel around it, around the stitching to swell. So, this one isn't quite, this isn't as bad as that, but I'm just kind of playing around with it on lots of different door panels. So when we take this, um, it doesn't create that perfect of a seal at the top, but when you put a tape line there and then you cling it to that, well then you just created like a watertight seal there that's never gonna let anything in, so that's why. And then, you know, we cut a hole here and then ruin all of it. There we go. Now it's going up. Ta-da! Then you have a nice clean surface. Because uh, every once in a while, like, you guys will see the... It'll start falling off. Ooh, my uh, valve stem. Oh, my whole tank is over here. I forgot about that. Have I ever used fusion mounting solution? Uh, yeah, I have. I've got some here, too. I haven't tried it in a hot minute, though. So, I have it at the bottom of that cart, along with both tint slimes and baby shampoo and Dawn. I got them all. To me, it was more similar to, uh, to like, dish soap but it kind of smells like laundry detergent. I wouldn't say it's rebottled laundry detergent, but because I highly doubt that's what it is, but that's what it smelled like. So, If you like, uh, if you like Dawn, but maybe a little bit more slidey, Fusion All Types pretty good. I know some people that really like it. Is Geo's glue aggressive, like Expels and who? Global? Yes, yes it is. All right, what do we need? We need ceramic. We need ceramic 35. Where do we have the? Do we have a short roll of ceramic laying around here somewhere? That's definitely not it. I need to do inventory today. This, Pro Nano 20. That would be why you're next to this box right here. And then this to me looks like my 35 ceramic. So we're gonna take a temp meter and find out. Oh, that actually reminds me. So if I were, guys, chat, how you doing, hi. So if I were um, a client of yours and I brought this in to get tinted, what do you think this back is right here? Just from the video, or somebody standing at the counter and they're like, hey, I got a BMW. Um, I want the front doors to match the back. You run out quick, you take a look at it. What do you think the back meter's at? I'll give you, give you a little bit of time, 20, 20, should be 20. Well, 18, 20, oh, I like this, this is good. Well, let me tell you, that is why you get one of these guys. Uh, tint meter. Doesn't have to be this particular one. I've had this one for a long time. God, everybody is saying 20. 20 to 25. 35. Ooh. Wow. So let's find out. We slide this over the glass. What do we got here? 37. It goes from 36 to 37, and it will usually stay at 37. Isn't that crazy? So I've said this for a while on stream. Um, foreign trucks and SUVs, a lot of the time, will lean a little bit lighter. I wasn't expecting this, with the look of it, to be 35, though. 
I was completely thrown off. But my point is, if you ever thought you don't need a tint meter, you need a tint meter. So these are good for a couple of reasons. One, you just immediately know. Because I don't know how many times that I've, I've like, lighting conditions will change a little bit. You'll be outside, somebody will ask you, and you're kind of just like, you're sitting there, you're eyeballing it, you're looking around, and you're like, yeah, that's definitely 20. On this one, I could have sworn it was 20. Um, and then the other one is, uh, is for salespeople. So if you've ever tinted a vehicle, okay, maybe not necessarily just sales, but if you've ever tinted a vehicle and the customer swore up and down, you tinted the wrong shade, this puts a physical number on it, digital, digital number. It puts a number on it that you can quantify so you know exactly what is on there. Now obviously with the front, we have natural tint to the glass, so this isn't going to be 100%. So whatever tint you put over here is going to be a little bit different. So this is 80% right now. So we're putting 35 over 80. It's going to be slightly darker than 37, but it's going to be damn close. But, yeah, that was crazy to me. So I just, I highly recommend looking into tint meters. Um, this is the one that I have. I've got this years ago. I think it's still on the same 9 volt. Um, it came with these handy little slides here. So if you're ever concerned, like maybe it's not accurate, you can take one of these slides. This is supposed to be 59%. Put this guy in here. Oh, look at that. It's not completely, <laughs> it's within 2% margin of error right there. Like I said, it's been a few years. Let's see what this is. It says 24.3%. This doesn't do point percent. Okay, so 23%. So we're pretty damn close. So you basically could bump that up even, and those front doors are maybe a slightly bit lighter than that. But just letting you guys know, tint meters um, can be some of your best friends sometimes. Uh, today, especially, I was just like, yeah, I bet it's 20. So I had already talked to the client for, for like five minutes, and then I ran and got my tint meter, and then the whole job changed at that point. So now we're doing 35 on this, on the front doors, and 35 on the full windshield, and it'll have a nice even look all the way around. So. Boom. Links in the description for these things too. Um, but I just, man, that was such a great day to bring that up. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so let's get started. So we got our 35 right there. Um, ooh, and because we're doing the windshield actually, let's take a little sidestep here and uh, prep the windshield so that way we can jump right into the windshield after we're done. Sorry, I thought we were just getting into cutting, but we're not. Jokes on me. It looks pretty dark. It does. Isn't that crazy? It's a dark 35. Oh, we can't raise that up all the way. It's going to bump. What percent on the windshield? Uh, we're doing 35 on the windshield as well. It's gonna be even even all the way around, which I don't think I've ever, no, that's not true. I, it's been a, quite a long time since I've ever seen anything with 35 on the whole vehicle with 35 on the windshield. It'll look good. It'll look naturally darker than 35, like most 35 vehicles will look. So you guys already thought the back looked 20 but it's gonna be super fun to drive with. Oh, and thank you guys too, by the way. My, uh, my last video has done really well. So for those of you that watched it, um, the video about Dotrix, much appreciate. 
With a windshield tinted, the front doors will look even more dark. Yep, yep, they will. And I tried to explain that as best I can. So I've got my blazer out there that's got 35 and 50, and they still wanted to go. They still wanted to go with uh, with 35 on the windshield too. It's like okay, cool. I'm glad I got that 50% example out there, because then if you want to go darker than that, it'll look uh, significant. Super chat, swole gang. How long can you use the scrub pads? Uh, there's no. It's kind of like just a. Thank you. Super chat Thank you so much for the five, by the way. Cents. How many times can you keep using the scrub pads before replacing them? Uh, um, yeah, swole game. Thank you for the five. How many times can you keep using the scrub pad? Um, really just till they st st like kind of lose their scrubbiness. We're going to put a towel under that. I don't want that propped up. So they'll kind of just start getting scuzzy and less scrubby. So they'll last for, I don't know, it, it, it's hard to put a time frame on it. You'll just kind of know when they start losing their effectiveness. If you're using them on like every car, I'd say like within like a couple of weeks for sure. But if you're using them periodically, I mean they could, one scrub pad could last for like a few months. Would you tint double five on the sides? Mm, no. <laughs> yes and no. If somebody had their car already tinted and wanted to tint over it, sure, I'll do it. But like just putting double five while they're here, I would probably make them wait and then tint it at a later date rather than just doing five over five right away. I know I need more glass aid. I've been working on it for months. I'm running into my own last rolls too. I sent a bunch of my crappy looking rolls out to people. And then I would, that like those were the rolls that I was using a lot of the time. Any blue pad, any brand? Um, I wouldn't get just any brand um, because it's, it's glass. If you're just using it for your like home dishes, it's one thing, but using it for actual customer glass. Um, I know you can find blue pads from Scotch um, locally, um, but the pads that I use, um, actually we just had a video on it. Um, the glue removal video. I've got tri-edge scrub pads. So those are the blue ones that I'm using right now. So any company could have any color for that grittiness, for that scrubbiness. So that's why you just want to use something that either says it's glass safe or get these ones right here. So these ones. Uh, so the blue ones are the more aggressive ones, the tan ones are less aggressive, but I have both uh, scrub it, scrub it types from Triage. Okay, now that that is drying, we can do the back. In Panama, I don't find any 3M pads. Sorry to hear that. I have to imagine in Panama, it might be hard to find a lot of things. What year is the BMW? Uh, it's a good question. I don't think it's a brand new one but within the last three years or so.
Put away the extra. Hopefully this goes well. I was ready to go live. I've had this one since 10. And then I was about to go live. And then something that was supposed to show up on a Saturday morning showed up. Oh, for setting up double cutting like this, um, single cutting too, um, always put the tint side facing the glass for your first piece and the liner side facing you. But when you're double cutting, you reverse the other pattern. So it's technically less safe for the tint because the liner is facing me, but. I think that'll be fine. I don't even really need to cut that bottom edge. So we have a little curve to the glass, but it's nothing crazy. A little curve on the bottom here. <laughs> Tried your technique for double cutting, didn't work for me. Takes practice, really does. Um, double cutting is one of the few things that'll majorly speed you up. So if you're really comfortable with hand cutting, uh, double cutting is going to speed you up immensely. Um, you will go through some pain and struggle double cutting, though. I went through it. But the film, here's the thing. The film that you waste um, isn't as expensive as the time. Time's more expensive. So that can be another car in a day. Get more things done. Like, it can be a number of things. You You get... So many more cars done in one single day from double cutting than probably anything. There's very few things that you else you can do um, for hand cutting for like tinning a car. Um, keeping all your tools on hand is another thing. Um, not having to tint in circles around the whole car. Harder double cutting on darker film. I guess if you're trying to see, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, but for hand cutting, I, I mean, yeah, you gotta see kind of where you're, you're going to cut. But I mean, I did a video where I installed the window blindfolded. There's so much that is just by feel. So for example, yeah, I can now see the top edge up here, but one thing that I'm doing before I make my cut is I'm pressing right here, and I can tell exactly where that edge is. And then I go a little bit above that to start the cut, and then just go straight. Same thing with the side seal. You press the film up against that side seal, and then you just ride that seal straight down and it's just about keeping consistent pressure down the whole window. It's not by sight, it's by feel. It gets tougher when you have a thicker film though. Be top edges, that's right. I have a tool that I have that hopefully I can make even crispier edges. I got a mini belt sander. It'll replace a file and hand cutting the top edge, uh, like basically shaving off the top edge, that's what it's supposed to replace. So I wanna play around with that, and I think I'm gonna do it on that car. It's going nice and safe. Rather than trying this on Nick's Corvette 
with 5,000 miles, we'll probably try it on something more expendable. When are you going to show us that? Um, I don't know. I don't have an exact plan for it yet. Just I have it on standby. <laughs> I haven't tried it myself, so. So it's not going to fit. The, the tricky part about it, too, is that you're still going to have to, like, you'd have to hand cut a couple of edges. So you really would have to go from here over to like a point on the glass, and then you could file off the rest of it when you have a frame door. Frameless is off to the races. You could do the whole thing. But on a frame door, it's a little bit of a different story. I do have a heat gun comparison that I also wanted to do today. So I've got the, a less exciting one for today and a more exciting one when we figure out which heat gun we like better out of these two. So I have that newer Craftsman one right there. So I'm just going to do the doors though because it's not really going to be like super crazy on the doors. Should open the mystery box. We could open it at the end of the stream. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, we actually could do that today. It's not a bad day at all because we don't have like the longest of jobs to do here. Although we are behind. <laughs> Gotta love when that happens. Supposed, uh, had a, uh, so we did that Ram TRX on stream, and then, like, we had it. Oh, the unfortunate story. So it was all set, ready to tint, and then it, it sideswiped another car. Needed body work, so then it was a few. It was a few more weeks to a month before, uh, before he scheduled to get it tinted. <laughs> and then we tint it, and then it was parked in front of his house, and a lawn care company, a rock flew from the lawnmower and busted out his passenger front window. Like, damn. He called, I was on stream too, and he was like, man, it's only been a couple of weeks and my window already got busted out. <laughs> and I was like, no. So he was supposed to be here at 9.30. He got here at like 10.30. I was about to go live with this one. And then it was like, nah, pull it in. We'll do it. It's fine. It'll take like 20 minutes. So you're behind, but you don't look stressed. I, I don't have any hard deadlines with this. Just that, like, I, I told them, like, two and a half hours. And then I think we're eking into the two-hour mark already. So it's just kind of, kind of annoying to be at that point. Oh, yeah, you have to wake these up. I forgot. Why don't you use a plotter? Because plotters don't plot right. I am the plotter. You know what's funny though, is when I started tinting, back in the day, it wasn't back in the day when I started tinting though. Man, you got so dogged if you used the plotter. And that's not even why I didn't like the plotter. It was, I just thought it was really dumb. It was like, who cares if you use one or not? And I still feel that way. But I didn't think I'd be more of an advocate for, uh, for hand cutting. Uh, 
I like the way you make tinting look fluid. Thank you. Time. Lots of time. Lots of repetition will make it look easy. Until all of a sudden it doesn't look easy anymore. You guys are seeing 13 years of practice. It's all built up to this moment here. This one BMW X4 ceramic door window. How much for getting a windshield on a Focus? Uh, 150 for just the windshield. Starts at 150. Depends on the film. We have carbon and ceramic too. Are you now taping all the sides on all the cars? I am. And hopefully we'll get a sponsorship here from Lowe's because uh, Look at all that. <laughs> Lows, 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 lows. For all your tinting supply needs. So I did some little little digging. Um, uh, what's it called? Tuck tape is uh, acry acrylic house house tape. House ceiling tape? I don't know. It's for construction. And uh, Tuck Tape is a Canadian company, and they're fantastic. It's just you're going to be buying it all on Amazon, which is fine, but, like, you got to remember to do that. And I always like solutions, too, that you can find locally if I, if I can do it. So I was out of tuck tape. I had a porch coming in, and I was like, shoot, I really need something. So uh, you can find the same types of tape, like people were saying Tyvek tape, which I didn't remember the name, but I guess it's by DuPont, which is a big company. Uh, they didn't have any at the Lowe's that I went to, but they did have their own tape. Same, same type of tape. Just their version of it with their branding on it. And it was like 10 bucks a roll. So I was like, hey, cool. So I decided to try it. I like, uh, I like the tuck tape a little better. It's a little wider and it holds together a little bit better. So like when you're unrolling it and you're trying to like, it, this stuff tears a little bit easier if there's, like, a little break or something. Tuck tape seemed to, like, was just a little stronger. But both of them are grabbing onto the paneling great. So, I'm going to gonna see what else I can find. But this is what I got for today. I did a thing the other day that I was pretty proud of too. I, so I was two, two staging a window and you guys know we have uh, plastic on the panels. Well, it's fresh clean plastic pulled right off the roll. And then, so what I did was I put this tape here, put the plastic over it, have a nice clean barrier here. I peeled the entire section of film and just let it hang on here. So I sprayed this off and pfft, tucked it up, rolled up the window, installed the bottom, and it was clean. Did it on an F-150, so it's got that S-curve to it. I was just seeing if it made it easier to like two-stage. I don't think it made it that much easier. <laughs> but it worked. 
So hey, there's that. Any advice on Tundra Backlass? Uh, I would watch a video. There's some things going on with that one that you really would need to see rather than me trying to explain it. I don't have a great explanation of it. It's been a while since I've done it. I'd probably make little marks on the bottom corners that are a little bit wider to kind of know where my ends are. But it's a, it's a tricky window. Tundra. I, if I remember right, too, I think the inside seal pops out super easily. So roll the window down, and that, that seal should just, like, pull straight out. Probably the Tundra. Yeah, I believe it's on the Tundra. So that'll make insulation way easier. Sweet. This went really well. How much would you charge for a Model 3 standard? Uh, seven, no, 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 that's with the windshield. Um, six? 600 for all the sides in the back. And I got a special order, a roll of film ahead of time. So I need a deposit on that job for sure. You are very welcome. Good luck. Yeah, I like. I was down in Texas with a forerunner for the week. Model three is way different. Model three is different than a lot of cars. That back window. The way we do it is. You gotta get a 60 inch roll and you gotta put it sideways and go up the entire piece of glass. Cause they don't have just a regular piece of glass on that. Tesla likes trying to make their whole cars glass. <laughs> the whole roofs. Is 35T dark for a windshield in terms of seeing out? I don't think so. There's some conditions where it'll be a little bit more sketchy. Um, but with nice bright white headlights, you're fine. Did you study for tinting? Not in the same way that you like study for college or anything. What about a two-piece Tesla back glass, 40 inch? It's not gonna work. Oh, no, actually I see what you mean. You mean going by just side? No, I, I you, yeah, you could do it. I wouldn't do it though. But you could do it. <laughs> I mean, what would be, what would be easier in that case? Honestly, if you can kind of like, cause you have good access to it and they change the defrosters and I think they go all the way across. So in that case, you'd probably be okay with doing it. It would just take a long time. And then sometimes you'll have like an air gap there that you have to, that you want to set down real nice, so you'd splice it. What is more easiest and cleanest? Side door insulation, load, bottom loading, or half peel? Um, they're both really clean if you know what you're doing. So cleanliness, they're the same. I think it's easier for more people to get the bottom load cleaner, but like I always say, the challenge then is in the paneling, not the install, which is good, but every car is different and people feel different about their cars being taken apart, so.
Tent over tent, very possible. <laughs> Been a minute, is Lexington good? The true troll. Um, how many? How my tent classes did you do? What? Um, I need you to make a sentence. <laughs> Can you tent over tent? Yeah. So factory tent is just dyed glass. Aftermarket tent. You can still tint over it and you're generally fine. But as a shop, uh, we take no responsibility for the work because the film underneath it can fail and tint technically isn't manufactured to stick to other tint. So when something goes wrong, then you're redoing both windows. So if you're just like, hey, I don't care, it'll save me some money and I'll run the risk and I'm pretty sure it'll be fine, then yeah, absolutely, there's no problems there. What would be the average time for a full tint job? It just depends on where you're at. I mean, I always tell people to shoot for two hours and under. Um, unless you're charging accordingly, and then you could take longer than that. But you still make good money um, tinting. It's just like, in a day, you're generally gonna wanna tint at least two cars. So if you can knock out two cars in a day, price it accordingly. Two hours is fast. Um, it's it's reasonably quick. I think it gives you a good amount of time to to get everything done, and then give you a little extra time for mistakes. If you're trying to operate as a shop. I mean, if you're able to tent from like home, then you can save some expenses there and it's, it's not as crucial. But when you have overhead and everything, does that include windshields? No, no, it really doesn't. Two hours, no, give yourself another hour for that windshield. Yeah, when I say full cars, I should make sure I clarify, it doesn't include full windshields. So <laughs> it's become more of a thing here. When people used to say complete tint, um, it wasn't the windshield. And there's shops that still operate like that. They're like complete tint. And then you give the car back and they're like, why isn't my windshield tinted? And you're like, oh, no, a complete tint wasn't with the windshield. How many tint classes have you done before you started your business? I didn't ever take a, mm, I didn't take a tint class in the same way that they exist now. I had the benefit of uh, my dad owned an auto accessories company and he had somebody train me at his, uh, at his company. So I was doing detailing work and learning electronics at the time. And then somebody our tinter quit over the weekend, and then my, my dad's, his business partner had a son who also uh, learned how to tint. So he sent him over to tint at that store most of the week, and then I'd learn while he was tinting. That was where I learned a lot of things, and then I worked with a number of other people since then. Good, good times. It was a long road for me, and it didn't come easy for me either. I started saying four doors and back make it easy. I, dude, I'm the same way. Because windshields became so much more of a thing now 
I mean, it's super common for me to do a full windshield with a vehicle. Back when I was newer, windshields, like people weren't even thinking about windshields. It was just like, whoa, why would I do the windshield? That's crazy. I want to be able to see. Come on now. <laughs> and then like a handful of years ago, it like got brought up in the state law about the tint law changing. And then a bunch of people started asking for full windshields. I don't know what the hell it was, but within the last like four, four years especially. Does tinting business slow down in the winter? Yeah, for sure. They'll be busy in slower seasons, but the longer you keep your business, the busier and more, like, the more consistent your business is going to be. People will get it done all year round, but weather can definitely have an impact on, on window tinting for sure. So, you know, spring breaks, well, it's kind of a funny way to say that. Spring happens, and then tax season happens, and those two things together kind of start getting people out there for tint and then hot weather hits and then it's off to the races february like end of february is when busy season starts for us nothing like pulling a car in for two fronts and hearing go ahead uh, can we do, go ahead with the windshield <laughs> oh no shit man i have done that so many times Oh yeah, he's just coming in for two doors. Okay, cool. We have three more full cars to get done and then two doors. And the next thing you know, they're walking back and they're like, yeah, so uh, he wants to add the windshield. So yeah, thanks. And it'll be on like an Audi. And I'm like, let's not do that today. What's the most annoying part to tint? Definitely the windshield. Windshield is the most amount of work. Um, and people are staring at it the most. Because you need it to drive. Dang. Yeah, man, I'm telling you. Just tape all the things now. Tape the sides. Tape the bottom. <laughs> tape the tape. It's it's coming out super clean. Scrub everything down. Play bar. Either or. I'm getting pretty similar results with the scrub pad and the clay bar, but there's some that just the clay bar is really good at, at cleaning like laminated windows because it gets that that laminated edge really well. Uh, would contaminants be the, the reason sometimes squeegeeing the top edge just little white spots that don't lay down? That's exactly the reason. So, like I was saying with the scrub pad, um, there's a lot of dirt that sits right on that top edge. So you'll clean the rest of the glass, and this used to happen to me, and I just never thought about it until a little later. You go to tin a window, and you're just like, what the hell? I cleaned it exactly the same as I cleaned that other window, yet yeah, this one turned out all speckly, and I don't know where any of it came from. Well, a lot of times, it'll come from that top edge. So take a towel, and you'll see, see these black lines here? That's from, there's, there's some rags with some horrendous ones on it, um, especially in here. Um, that's, that's where that comes from. Go and wipe that off. Clay bar, scrub pad, rag, all of them are going to help. Okay, windshield time. So we got to do two things to this windshield. One, we have to tint it in 35, and then two, we have to put a windshield strip because somebody cursed me, and now I do a ton of windshield strips. So I got to find Pro Classic, Pro Classic, Pro Classic. This is mostly Pro Classic, Pro Nano 70. And then I got to do inventory sometime later. Pro Nano, Pro Nano 35, Pro Nano 35. So these two, 
That's what I'm looking for. Ooh. I'm converting my workshop into a tint studio. I like how you said a tint shop or a workshop into a tint studio. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely look forward to seeing the pictures. Clean workspaces are great. Definitely share those when you're done. Even progress pictures is much appreciated. Yeah, so 35. That's going to make this all kind of look much darker. But, oh no, did we do that thing again? Oh God, I'm going to hate myself if I did that thing. Oh, I did. Shut up. No! Oh God, I hate that. This drives me crazy. So it's hard to see that edge on one side. You know, we're like, and then you give like a slightly wavy cut. All right, let's save this. See how my cut goes in that way rather than just straight? So this piece is about an inch short on the side. It doesn't mean it's a bad piece. It just means that it's not for this windshield anymore. Oh, I hate that. It's like you make sure your edge is covered on that side and then it kind of shifts as you're unrolling it and you hack it off. And I tell you, I'm either on one or two sides. I'm either like an inch short or it's like three or four inches too, too wide. Never, wow. That's never been able to fix. Can you flip it? I could try it and maybe that would, uh, maybe that would fix it. Oh my God, that's not this roll, it's the other one. This is Pro Classic 20. <laughs> Let's not do that. That's why I need to put... I don't even know where that box is. I've been looking for that box for like a week. I have a full roll of 20%. And then it should be just right here. And then I have no box to put it in. Oh, I got those. I can put in one of those. But I was like, okay, where's the actual box? All right. Now this is going to be about five inches too wide. Yeah, I could try and flip it, and it might have been okay. Sometimes it is. But I just, I, I didn't even want to try and, like, flip it and crease it and whatever. I'm just like, hey, there we go. Let's put another piece on it. We'll save that for another door. Double check the percent before installing. Yeah, no shit. I, we, how many times have we accidentally put the wrong shade on recently? <laughs> Ooh, that looks dirty. Yep, there you go. There it is. So we are correct. not confidence inspiring when you pick up the 20% dyed roll. <laughs> Would you use Gila on what? No, don't use don't do that. Okay, so Gila is a brand and ceramic is a type of film. So those are two completely different things. There could be Gila ceramic. But Gila is an easy access, like you can you go to the auto parts store and get it. You can get it and play around with it and put it on your windshield all you want. But it's not gonna be pro nano ceramic. It's like, God, what's that? What's a good, 
good real world comparison there that is not tint, not tint related. Yeah, we gotta tuck that underneath. I hate when they do wipers like this. All right, let's cut this a little bit. Right about there. Five on a windshield? Yeah, we don't do that here. Not that I don't want to. It's like, please tint responsibly. <laughs> Yeet. That's what I've been using for five years. I feel like if I use ceramic, then I can make the application easier. No, ceramic's not going to make your application easier. A better quality film is going to make your application easier, though. So, you, you're asking decent questions. They're just completely different. So, you have brands, and then you have film types. And they're not always the same across... I mean, they're, they're never the same across all the different makers either. So my Geo Ceramic is going to be different from Solar Guard Ceramic. It's going to be different from Gila Ceramic. You know what I mean? So, yeah, they're ceramic films, but there's going to be differences between those. It's just their version of it. But you might have an easier time installing a professional grade ceramic versus a Gila variant. So, okay. Alrighty, so. Alrighty, so I wanna do a little heat gun comparison um, on this windshield right here. So I've had this sitting for a couple of days. This is the uh, Porter Cable Craftsman now. Uh, this is what the Porter Cable used to be. I guess Craftsman bought it and turned it into the Craftsman heat gun. So it's going to be pretty much similar to that. Uh, this is the tried and true Wagner $20 heat gun. Feels a little bit like a toy, but if you want a cheap heat gun, this one's great. This one used to be $35, now it's $50. Um, so what I want to do is a quick comparison between the two. So we're gonna be shrinking half uh, with this heat gun and half with the other one and just kind of see which one goes faster. Um, and in the meantime, let's unbox this one. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be relatively uneventful, but sometimes they come with little heating extras like little ends and whatnot. So brand new. Just pull it out of the box. We got a little manual in there. That seems to be it. For 50 bucks, what do you still get in a heat gun? Um, this does bring up a good discussion too about the other heat guns. So Wagner's got better heat guns. Wagner's got different heat guns, and honestly, they're just usually feature packed, and you don't need those extra features. You're just all your heat guns. You're gonna turn them up all the way, all the time, and you vary your heat with distance. So. I mean, this is a nice feeling heat gun. I like the uh, the rubber rubberiness grip that they got to it. It feels pretty solid. Your heat control is here. So leave that cranked up all the way. There's so many times that I've accidentally like picked this up and I start tweaking it down. Make sure that's up and you can put a piece of tape over that so that locks there. Um, and then for the Wagner, um, they don't have a, the, the heating difference is here. It's in the switch. So just one and two. So I just, it's always up and two. So for both of these, let's just, let's just make a good thumbnail. So for both of these, oh, let's do them this way. Then it'll be like, wow, it looks cool, right? I think, I don't know. Anyways, um, uh, we're gonna be turning up the heat all the way and we're just gonna have some fun with it. So let's plug this guy in over here. We're gonna use it on the drivers. We're going to use 
the Wagner first, kind of as a baseline, so you guys know we've done that one for so long. And then here in the near future, we're gonna be using the Fusion heat gun, and we're gonna see how those compare. So before we start, um, Canon. Let me, let me bring up my stopwatch. So, stopwatch, GoPro. So I'm gonna bring up a rough stopwatch here and then we're just gonna kind of, I don't know, we're gonna put it up here because magic. And then when we go to start, we're just gonna hit the start button and then hopefully we'll remember to stop it, right? We're not using the Fusion today, we'll use it another day. But we'll do, whichever one we like better, we'll compare against the Fusion. So let's start. And you can take a second or two off to get to this point. So we're just gonna kinda go through it at like normal to faster speed. We're not trying to set any speed records here. We're just literally shrinking it. So what I wanna know is if I just, like, in my daily use, is this going to be faster? Will I save some time spending uh, 30 extra dollars and probably more than that long term because they're going to break on you? But up front, should I get that one or should I get this one? So my thoughts on this one is it's a great heat gun. It really is. It feels a little bit like a toy, especially when you use some of the beefier heat guns. But for reliability, consistency, and you can find these everywhere for like 20 to 25 bucks, these things are great. Ignore all the other ones with like the cool down feature, the temperature, whatever. They all put out basically the same amount of heat and I've had more problems with the feature packed ones than just this one. This one, you just need it to turn on, throw some heat, and you're off to the races. So that is almost done here. We're coming into the home stretch. Done. Where are we at? One minute, 43 seconds from back and forth. So we're gonna reset. Oh no, can we, how do we do a lap? Anyways, whatever. Uh, let's just screenshot it in case. Is that how you screenshot? Cool. I think I can resume and then put a lap. So reset, and then we're going to start and run over to the other side. Again, subtract a few seconds here. I mean, this is the better heat gun, right? Or the more expensive one. So. We should catch up on that time. So this is the first time this heat gun's already been turned on, but it already feels a little bit slower to me. Like I'm wanting this thing to already go a little faster. But I remember using these uh, the Porter Cable versions, and I really liked it. Now I think it's getting hotter. Now, it's the, the warm-up time, and not, not so much the cool-down, but the warm-up time is really important. So that's what drove me crazy about the ones with the cool down times, is sometimes they would make you cool down the heat gun before turning it back on again. You want a heat gun that's just like, you turn that trigger on and it's ready to go. It's got that new heat gun burning oil smell to it right now too, so that'll go, <laughs> that'll go away. It's heavier, it's meatier, I'm trying to figure out which heat gun I'd bring on to the second round right now. Honestly, I'm not sure. It's fine. It works. Oh, 
Overall, this doesn't seem any faster to me. If anything, it feels slightly sluggish. So what you would hope is that for 50 bucks in that case, if it's not gonna cut through a windshield any faster, it would last longer. So that, I don't know. Okay, we're done. Let's go run back over. Where were we at? A minute 40? Ooh, shit, we're at 220. That's even with a few seconds and stuff like that. So we are a full like 30 to 40 seconds faster with the Wagner versus that. Maybe it'll get a little bit better, but I can't imagine it cutting that much time down when you get used to it. So going on to the next round, uh, we're not gonna be using this one, I think. I think you can see that oil burning off. <laughs> That's with every new heat gun. Ooh. So in the next one, um, when we have a good situation for it, we're gonna bust out this guy right here. This is the Fusion Maxflex heat gun, and hopefully that'll lay waste to both of them. Uh, this is $180, $190, I don't know. It's like eking up towards 200, so it better pull its weight. $20 versus that, you'd sure hope you get that much out of it. So yeah. I think the, the Craftsman feels more substantial, but those little Wagners, man, they'll burn through some film real quick. So that was cool. Do you guys like that? You know, I wouldn't have thought it'd be that big of a difference. I was like, maybe like a 10 second difference or something. But to go from like 140 to like 220, that's a lot. Craftsman doesn't make a lot of parts. They're mostly a white label branding company. They source the majority of their tools from other brands. You are very correct. That's with, yeah, that's with a good number of companies too. You can see this one, hmm, hmm? Looks, uh, looks pretty similar to my other light, wherever I put that. God, where did I put light, that light? This, it, this is different, but the uh, Harbor Freight version is better than that one. But if I were to suggest a more expensive heat gun that's like kind of within the same range, I, like I was suggesting the Porter cable. But honestly now, man, if you're gonna stay budget on your heat gun, oh, I'm so dumb, I'm holding it. What the heck? Yeah, have you ever done that? Have you ever, I haven't done that in so long. Where's my light? Oh wait, I'm literally holding it. Yeah, so this one's better. This one's better than the Craftsman. It's smarter. It's smarter, it's rechargeable. Uh, and outputs the same light. The Craftsman sets you up with triple A's. Like, triple A's, come on. You know they did that to save some costs. You get a rechargeable lithium battery for 25 bucks. I needed an extra one of these, so that's why I bought it. But yeah, this thing, watch, turn them on. This one's probably running low. It's been used for a little while, so look at that. It's already running down. Still green, though. This one's <laughs> is red. Um, and then when you press them both off, Oh look, this one goes into the low, and then the front, and then turn off. So you have to cycle through three every time. This one still has those three options, but when you leave it on for five seconds, then it just turns back off. Smart. 
Triple A's. Yep. Yep, that's what it's got. It's got three AAA batteries in a lithium sized holder. Like, Craftsman, what are you doing? But I bet you everybody that buys one doesn't go out and buy the other one. They just got to be good enough and easily available. What was that? Get a Streamlight Switchblade. Woo! Haven't heard of that one. I'll have to look it up. Thanks for the suggestion. Much more durable, has a UV light for AC leaks, benefit, beneficial for mechanics. I was buying any number of lights. Um, cause at the time, like spending 80 bucks on like a bright thin LED light was like, they just didn't have nicer LED lights. So when somebody pointed out, uh, this light that I have, it was like 25 bucks at the time. I had spent like $85 on the snap on truck and like elsewhere for similar lights, 25 bucks for that guy all day long. So. I've been using that for quite a while now, so anything else that'll just blow it out of the water, I'm excited for. So I'm really sad. I lost, or I didn't, I didn't lose it. It's at home. I meant to bring my dash protector in today because I washed it and it turned out fine, uh, minus a couple little gripes. So I guess I gotta use I gotta use one of these. Oh, I gotta use one of the really super nice tint whiz towels and a soak rope. That dash towel would have been really nice to put in here. I almost ran home and got it. So I gotta find my soak rope. There it is. My soak shield. I'm a mechanic in a dark shop. Lights are my livelihood. <laughs> then I couldn't think of a better person to recommend something. Thank you, sir. For, you know, for the longest time I saw people use, uh, use like these really big, they were like, they, they were like the, just the big tube lights. And I'm like, you can't get to the bottom of a deck lid. And they had some thinner ones out at the time. But they were still using those. I'm like, come on now. Yeah, this is why I wish I had my other one. Do you worry about retirement? What's there to retire from? I like what I do. I don't know. I don't know what I'd do. Your post to Facebook is wrong. It's set to you selling something. Ah, that's weird. I don't know why it would have done that. It did that once with the RAM. I don't know why it's doing that with this post, but I didn't do anything different. And it's less of a selly post too, because I put like $90,000 truck in the TRX one that I did. Thank you for letting me know though. We're selling it. We're selling this BMW. <laughs> We're tinning it on stream. And then I'm selling it. Even though it's not mine. I used, still use that big tube light. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Those things are no fun. They just, like, they're bulky. They don't put out very much light for the size a lot of the times. Like, they were just like, ew, I can't even see what I'm doing with this. If you're putting them on the inside and you're cutting out like some bigger quarter windows and stuff, sometimes they're they're okay, but yeah, there's better lights. 
the owner of Sun Distributing, they had those at their shop, and he's like, I like them. And I was like, let's get rid of them. <laughs> I think he got better lights later on. I want the seat to go backwards. Oh, there we go. We woke it up. BMW, everything, on some of them, everything likes to go to sleep. I don't get it. Ooh, I like this. They laminated the dots. Good job, BMW. You get a cookie on this one, because this one's going to make my customer that much more happy. They're not even going to know. Twenty years. Ooh. Time for an upgrade. Do you have kids? I have one one kid. He is eight months old. He just climbed up his first step yesterday. And then he proceeded to climb up a couch. Like, like basically prop himself up into standing. And that's like, uh-oh. <laughs> Do you offer overnight shipping? Uh, I don't have an option for it. Um, if you want to get the stuff quicker, um, like, you want to get faster shipping, call Geo directly. You can order it right from them. Because I don't, I don't even know if they have an option on their site to do that. But same price, comes from the same place, and then, yeah, if you need it rushed out, they'll do whatever they can to, to rush it out to you. I think there's still, there's still time to get film out today, I think. Depends on how slammed they are, though. I know how that goes, though. Oh, hey, with the suggestion for the light, can you post it in the Facebook group? I'd actually really appreciate that. You can tag me, too. That way... That way I know exactly what it is and I can check it out after the fact because I'll forget. There we go. Looking pretty handy. How long does that squeegee last? Um, you'll nick it up. Uh, not in not too much time. What I'm going to try and set up is a little station to sharpen the blades. So if you take a straight edge and you put the squeegee in a vise, you can just trim off a sliver of it and keep using the blade because it's all great material. You just got to keep that edge. So that's kind of been bugging me lately with, with basically every squeegee. And like one of my hybrids already has like a small imperfection at the end of it. So it's already streaky. One of them's totally fine. One of them's streaky, so I flipped it to the other side. And like, come on, I, like I'm not gonna send it back or whatever. It's just, I have a squeegee, it's good. We just gotta fix it. But the hybrid is, has become my favorite, like by a pretty wide margin now. It's more expensive though, which isn't my favorite. 
But hey, if it's better and deserving, then cool. Let's get this to lay down smooth. No bubbles. Do you normally listen to music when not streaming? Music or uh, or videos of things that I'm trying to learn. So like streaming stuff. <laughs> that was, uh, I was listening to those videos for a long time. I always have something going on. Uh, like, something to listen to in the background. Tinning gets to the point where it's just kind of like you just coast through it. As long as everything's pretty straightforward, it doesn't stress you out. Looking to order 40 inch for my first order, 40 inch by 100 rolls will 40, yes, 40, 40 inch rolls will cover damn near everything. Um, well, it, okay, I'm gonna say it covers everything. Ooh. Make sure that's flushed. But uh, 36s will also cover the vast majority of back windows and side windows. So you take a 36 inch, cut it in half. So if you wanna be like extra sure, 40s are great, but usually what I'll do is I'll have like, like a 40 is kind of on backup for me and I'll typically go with 36s on a, so much. So like this windshield, for example, 40 in, or 36 inch all day. It's not until you get into like transits and caravans that uh, 40s just quite aren't big enough, but 36s will cover pretty much everything. I see people using the blue swiper to squeegee the whole windshield. Are they using uh, using the side swipe? Yeah, the handle would get in the way. There's a stubby version of it that would probably be just as helpful. Maybe they don't know or they don't like the handle. What's the reason for you starting the reverse roll at an angle? Um, it was recommended to me to do it and um, just kind of, it angles the material up and gives you a better, like, just helps with rolling in the bottom. Seems to, seems to work well. Because I want to free up as much material at the bottom as I possibly can. Like, I don't want any extra hanging out here. I want this to be, like, flush because it's already hard enough to jam the tint in there. Would 3K be good enough to start with in film? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, you could get a good inventory off of that. Um, mostly like your like a color stable dye, um, you'll be able to order a handful of shades and stuff. There's a few ways you can do it. So like if you just wanna make sure you have enough film across the board always order a little bit more in like 20 20 35 and 5 like here everybody gets 20 not everybody but it's my most popular shade so i'm always going to want to make sure i have some extra 20 on hand um and then for like some of the lighter shades you can do half rolls um if cost is going to be uh, a problem for you but it only takes two or three days to get more film. So, I mean, don't be, don't be too shy. Fast one them super don't think that you need to get everything right off the bat. Thank like, you, just man. order. And then just kind of like, oh, shit, I need some more of this. Like, then just get more. We had a super chat. 
right in the middle of a windshield. Thank you. I'll be right with you, sir. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, not sorry. Let me just get this settled here. I miss my, my voice that would, that would say the whole thing. I don't hear it. I think you guys hear the, the chat alerts. I, for whatever reason, it's not working on my end, my headset though, so yay, more troubleshooting. Did you not wet the window again? I didn't. It's smart to do it. Um, sometimes you're fine without it. This film has been sliding pretty nice on this glass. So I, like, I don't know, I just didn't do it this time. There's, you can do it or not do it. Totally fine, whatever makes it easier for you. I'm not always consistent. <laughs> Let's see, so make sure all your gaps are covered. So this has that big old funky cutout. I didn't feel like disassembling a whole BMW mirror assembly where like a Dodge Ram or a Chevy or something else, I'm more comfortable with disassembling. BMW X4, eh, I'm gonna leave it on there. I d haven't seen one taken apart, it looks like you just pop some housings off and maybe it'll be okay, but they gave us a fair amount of room, so we left it on. What the hey? Um. Yo, really? Did I throw it down there? Like, what happened here? What the heck? Okay, stop. Stop fusing handle. You are, where did I put it? It's here, it's, it's there somewhere. I'll find it, good God. It's, <laughs> sorry. It's somewhere here. Somebody knows where I put it. That would be like super helpful right now, but I have one on backup, so. I'm, Really annoyed. The cars are eating your handles. That's exactly it. You know. Um, I. <laughs> Either the squeegee fairy granted me another one, or the customer brought it back over the weekend and left it at my door. But this morning, I walked up to my front door, and there was a fusion squeegee sitting there right in front of my door. So I'm gonna say, customer brought it back, left it there, thank you so much, very much appreciated, and then I immediately lose the other one, or that, okay, like, where, they just used it. Something about the hybrid handles, man. What the heck, I have never misplaced that squeegee or any squeegee handle that much, and then I did it right away back to back it's somewhere right here it's just it slipped down somewhere i gotta find it but i got a spare so yay i was all happy this morning too i was like yay i can load them all with different squeegees now i'm like i can load them all with hybrids and keep them on standby for when i inevitably lose it All right, let's go over it one more time. Um, then we gotta do a windshield strip and then we'll be all done. Probably, they had, they had no time deadline. So they're, they're like, yeah, I have, like, it's, it's all good, however long it takes. I'm just like, <laughs> was already a little behind. So I was trying to find my tint meter and then I was looking all over the place for it. Turns out I left it in my hoodie pocket. Um, so I used it on this car and then I went to go get it and then I'm, I'm like walking around my shop a hundred times I can't find it <sighs> absent-minded put things down lose them so fast when you give me more than a toolbox it's gonna go missing now I got 3,000 square feet 3,300 square feet to uh, misplace something 
Well, I'm going to say that went pretty well. It, did I check in the pile of microphone? Aha! It got, it was on there, it got bumped. There it was. It was like that. That's why I couldn't see it. All right, cool. Boom. They are eating them, though. If we, wait, if we waited an extra 15 minutes, it's like, uh, it's like a snake. It would have eaten it. It was gone. I do like complimentary vacuums. It takes three minutes, and it gets awesome reaction from customers. That's a really nice extra thing there. Way to stand out. Stuff like that is great. I don't even have a shop back. <laughs> it's, it's on the list of things that I hardly ever would use that I should just have. Same thing for, uh, for the jump starter. I finally got one. I was like, I, mm. but when you need one, you really need one. So I actually have like a, a legit, a legit one. Might have to put tracking tags. <laughs> Let's get the Apple tags and just put them on my tint tools. <laughs> oh my god, can we do that? <laughs> and then we can get them to ping or something. Where is it? Ping. Ping. Um, I just did a 2001 Jeep Cherokee for the neighbor. There was so much mud in the seals. I told the customer I cleaned it as much as possible. It wasn't a good tint job. Situations like that are really tough. Um, cause you're right. Like that, I know the Jeep that you're talking about. I don't like doing those. There's rubber set. They're hard framed. They're annoying. Yeah, you're going to have to usually just cut them a little exact, take an air gun and kind of blow all that shit out. But even then, it's still tough to get a good job on those. Don't beat yourself up too much about that. Hard part is now living next to a neighbor with it. <laughs> oh, why did we hang that? We were going to do the other side. Ah, oh, God, I can't even think anymore. We should have left like half the glass aid on. We still have to do a windshield strip. See, you misplace the squeegee and then you just completely lose it. That's how this goes. Everything, you guys are like, wow, you make it look so, so easy and everything runs so fluid. And then you throw a little monkey wrench into it and then we tumble downhill. We need a hard reset, so we need to start with a whole nother vehicle, and then we'll be okay. That usually helps. If I can take a breather and start a new car, then I'll get the groove back. Dang, this looks good. I'm very happy with that. Jumper is a must. <laughs> yeah for sure it is and I would definitely recommend it it was always just that like like I don't uh, gotta go buy one and I just don't feel like spending the money on it when you I have other streaming stuff I want to buy but I got that guy there right now he's been useful put some googly eyes on it Okay, now we're gonna do a windshield strip. So they said, use your best judgment, which is fine, I can do that. They went with 35, but they still want an effective windshield strip. How many dust specks come up on average? Zero, none, it's flawless. See, there's zero here. Just don't look at that one. <laughs> 
There's not, okay, so there's not an exact number on, like, speckles. Like, you're never, here's the thing. If you got somebody like, hey, there's, like, something here that I'm unhappy with. The thing is, you, spider. The thing is, your goal is to make them happy. So if they have problems with, like, the thing, you can try and talk them down and explain it, and then if they're just, like, unhappy, then just try and suck it up and make them happy. So with, uh, with like, a window, don't, don't sit there and, like, count your speckles. Just overall look at it. Does it look good or does it look not so good? And if it doesn't look not, if it looks not so good, then redo it. And then uh, if you think it looks good and then the customer thinks it's not, looks not so good, again, redo it. And then just try and make them happy. That's, that is the goal. That's what happens when I keep extra 35 rolls sitting around, not on a core. They just go to shit. Because I always grab fresh off the box. Do you know how we just clean this whole windshield off and it looks really nice? Now we spray it again and do that again. Huh. How do I do this one? I'm annoyed because there's a slight... Hmm. All right, we'll just do that. Normally don't do it all the way across, but one of the edges has a couple of defects on it. I guess I could trim it off on the glass board. Oh well, we're this deep. Just keep going. So if you do a full Full windshield strip. What should I do? Look at the other message. Oh, is that the super chat? I'm so sorry if that's the case. I forgot we had one of those. What's your name? Republican. Oh, no, you have the Jeep. We talked about that a little bit. I don't know. Try and redo it and make him happy or just tell him to go fuck off. <laughs> We had a super chat somewhere in here uh, that I said I would get to in the middle of a windshield. Hang on, let me bring up my YouTube window here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Fast! Fast M! Thank you so much for the five, I appreciate it. Thank you, man. You're very welcome, I appreciate that five. Thank you so much. Cool, we got to that one. Sweet, we got it. I mean, if you think you can do a better job, then just like redo some of it and try and make it look better. Um, I mean, that's the situation with every unhappy customer. Is like, you just do what you can to try and make them happy. And if you think they're one of those people or like it's one of those cars that is like, look, man, I'm sorry, it's a really old car. I did the best I could. That's just how it's going to look at the end of the day. Sometimes you just have to remove all the film and refund them their money and part ways. Now we have a customer that wants double limo. Oh, this is another one. Oh, okay. Well, you asked another question, sir. No, I have a customer that wants double limo, but I don't want to do it for legal reasons. What do you think? Yeah, don't do it. Tell them to fuck off, too. <laughs> do it without a warranty. Some people do do it with no paper trail. No, you got your, it's your business. Don't let him tell you how to run your business. Just say like, hey, uh, I don't feel comfortable doing it, so I'm not gonna do it. If you wanna take it somewhere else, then take it somewhere else, it's fine. I've done that with people. Windshields especially. Somebody comes in and they wanna do an overly dark windshield, and I'm like, look, I'm sorry, the darkest I'll do is 35. <laughs> yeah.
He wants double limo on the windshield. Yeah, well, he's just a dumb, dumb customer. Just tell him to go fuck off. Like, sorry, I don't do that here. And if you, it's like some of them are understanding, and they'll be like, oh, okay, I get it. And some will be like, okay, you can choose not to do business for somebody. I'm trying to figure out how low I want to go on this. I told all my customers to fuck off, and now I'm homeless. <laughs> Well then, yes, should have done that double limo job. Look, you're not gonna make everybody 100% happy. And you're not gonna be able to do, oh yeah, we said maybe the top of that. I remember now, there's this little contoured spot. Cause I don't think they wanna go, I think they want a nice windshield strip here, but I don't think they wanna go crazy on it. So we'll just do a nice, elegant looking one up here. a little higher but I think yeah I would have just like I'd be nice about it but like look no I'm not gonna do double limo and he's like do it i will be like I don't want to taint your car bye and then just move on to the next job because you'll have more than him I did one in limo, but it was for a movie. Oh, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Like, that's special use case then. Special circumstances, show vehicles, like any of that. Like, you know, if a company brought in a vehicle and was like, yeah, this is a show car. We want to black out the whole interior, so we just want to do limo on everything. Yeah, absolutely. But it's a show car. You're not just like, hey, I got my Honda Civic and I want to black out the windshield. YOLO, bro. No, fuck off. Same thing with the, uh, I think the only thing that I draw a line out to was uh, those like tank stripes or whatever they call them. Like, so they do the windshield strip on top and then they do one on the bottom. I don't do that. Cause that's like borderline that. You're doing limo. You're doing limo like on the bottom and then you're doing limo on the top and you're, you're like edging in on like a totally limoed windshield with a bright spot in the middle which is gonna screw with your vision. Like, yeah, no. No, I won't, I won't do that either. Did you measure that strip? Yeah, with my hand. So you like can do this or take a tool or something and just make them the same height. Windshield strips are mostly just like, here they're, every car's different, so it's all just kind of what, what you think looks good, what looks like it would be good for the, the, the customer. Generally, I like them to come look at them, uh, but if they're not here, then you just use your best judgment and you talk to them beforehand. Like, yeah, where about are you thinking on that? Okay, this is kind of what it's gonna look like. I'll do the best I can. And then they're usually stoked with whatever you do. Here, we're in a bit of a pickle because if they wanna change the windshield strip, uh, we can't really do that without changing the entire windshield, so. <laughs> Anybody to it, tuning in right now that's like, hey, I'm thinking of having having him tint my windows, and then I'm just like, yeah, tell that customer to fuck off. It's like, oh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he's gonna tell me to fuck off. No, it's, it's the dum-dums that wanna do 16 layers of limo tint and don't wanna see out of their own windows. Like, come on, be real here. <laughs> Damn pickles. We're in a pickle.
So we went a little bit lower than that. This right here, so it'll kind of it'll blend in, blend in pretty nicely here. Then we'll just line it up with the other side. Look at where your cut is. And then we can check it on the outside. Looks like that's lining up pretty well. I like when they do this AS1 line on both sides because then it gives you a really easy point to line up with on the ends. It's when they do like half of it an AS1 line and half of it not. Oh shit. Okay, so tint on tint, totally fine with a strap. Would you do tank stripes with 35? Because I was interested in that. I, I, I. There's always somebody that's got to work around. Yeah, I guess I can do it for 35. You're going to be more okay, but I'm going to charge you similar to a full windshield. So, like, just get the full windshield. Like, for real. It's 50 bucks for a strip. And then it'll be 100 bucks for the tank stripes. But I get it. It's a different look. But I'll do it. I'll do that one. That's fine. Thank you for looking at 30. I'm just annoyed because it was just like, yeah, I don't do those. And then somebody's like, how about 35? <sighs> what is tank stripes? They're like, you do a strip at the top, and then they just you just do another strip at the bottom. And then you have this big gap in the middle. And people like it. <laughs> that's that's one of those where I'll be like, all right, you crazy kids. That's all right, you crazy kids. You 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 do you. Some people you just like, you know, whatever they're asking for. It's like, man, it's fine. But you got your limits too. Like I want to do five on the front doors and leave the back 20%. And you're just kind of like, okay. You sure you want to go darker in the front than the back? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Do you like memes? Yeah, they're good. All right, there we go. Cool. Now once this tacks up to the other layer, <laughs> you seem like a meme guy. <laughs> Thank you, whatever that means. Sweet, now we got both our hybrids. Look, I even have one in one way and one in the other. So put that back. Look, see, I got three fusion handles. I want to put different blades on all of them, and I actually have a fourth one sitting in a, in a box. So that reminds me of the little unboxing that I suppose we should do. I already checked it out, but I wanted to show you guys on stream because it legitimately looks pretty cool. I don't know if I'll use it, but it looks pretty cool. So the, uh, I'm guessing dash protector. Uh, the, the, no, no, no. Uh, so I like the dash protector. I threw it in the wash at home. Um, I have one, one small gripe about it. But it actually held up fine in the wash for the most part. There's, there's like, I've got a, f there's a few downsides to it, but I think it is legitimately a better solution.
But I didn't have, like I put it in the wash, I didn't have any weird holes. Um, there are fuzzies that are coming off of like broken parts of the uh, soak rope that was put on it. So, but I, I don't think it's enough to discredit the whole thing. I just, it might have some longevity issues. So we'll bring it back. We'll give it its fair shake. Because I think they're all like handmade too. So like, it's got like a very grassroots beginning to it where like people are making these things. Do your clients complain how long it takes you to tint their car? Does it take too long to tint their car? No, no, never, never here. Um, I mean, there's times that a few appointments have like gone past like when I told them it would probably be done. So like they're maybe getting a little antsy but that's like edge case. Most of the time, the people that dr that bring their cars in are like, yeah, man, you look like you put a lot of effort into everything you do. Just make sure it turns out right. Take all the time you need. I put the deadlines more on myself than customers put on me. So I don't like to, uh, I don't like to waste too much time on it because there should be other other stuff getting done for the day. Not me. I take three hours and people say wow. <laughs> uh, it's like it all comes down to like what they're used to and setting the right expectations for what you do. So there's a lot of people that call around, especially if they've had tint before. And when you, like they expect, they expect that you're like everybody else. And if you don't have a way of showing that you're different or that you're gonna take longer or you don't preface that up front, that's when, uh, that's when you're gonna run into into problems. But like, I mean, we have long format live streams here. Like that's, and then when we're getting referrals off of those videos and stuff, people are just introduced from it right from the beginning. Like, oh, this is how long it takes. This is what the process is like. He looks like he puts a lot of care into it. Yeah, that's great. I got a sample of C2, I liked it. What are your thoughts? I like it a lot. I use it really often. This is the Pro Nano Ceramic, um, but I've got a lot of videos using the carbon. It shrinks really smooth. Um, God, what was that? We did a stream this week with it. Yeah, it's a great film. Shrinks nice, good color, um, smooth, no haze. Good stuff. Very, very, very good stuff. And then if you ever need to remove it, it peels clean. Sticks really hard to the glass, but that, that peels much cleaner than the Pro Classic and the Pro Nano do. Dang, yeah, I think they'll be happy with that. That looks pretty good. How do you clean your microfibers? Um, I use some laundry detergent and no, uh, no dryer sheets. I found dryer sheets really makes them suck. I looked up, uh, the, ra the rag company has great microfibers, but these ones are the Costco ones. They're like about as economical and big pack of good microfibers as I found so far. Um, but I throw them in the wash. I don't use a special wash, but maybe they turn out even nicer if you did a special wash. 
and then I put them in the dryer. And they, like microfibers, they have all, I guess they have all these microfibers. Uh, and then when you put uh, like a dryer sheet in there, it coats all the fibers so they don't wipe off the windows as well anymore. So when you throw them in the dryer, keep it on a lower heat. I mean, I think we just generally use regular heat, but they say don't, don't heat them up too much or you'll start to melt the fibers. And then uh, don't, use, don't use dryer sheets with them. And then they'll, they'll stay good for longer, which I can absolutely say that is the case. I just thought you wash them a handful of times and they start to get shitty. No, they'll stay good for quite a long time. Just don't use dryer sheets on them especially. Dang, this looks good. Curious to what this looks like. Curious to see what this looks like with everything shut now. 35, 35, and then 35. Aww. <laughs> I like that. It's darker tone, but a lighter. This, if I were to ever see a dark but legal vehicle, it's this. I mean, I suppose you could just do 35 all the way around with 35 on the windshield. But I'm telling you, like everybody thought this back was 20. So it definitely looks 20. Maybe it's just because it's hunched down in the back more, but this is 35. You can see more when you look directly through it, but most of the time you're looking up here. So 35 to match the factory on the back, which is 35. 37, whatever. And then 30, 35 on the windshield. Ooh, I like this a lot. This looks great. Good deal. Let's see. We still pretty good. There's going to be a little tone coloring difference from the front to the back. Uh, that's just how uh, tints are with factory. Like every, every glass is going to look a little different. This line kind of matches up nice with that little sensor cut out right there. So, dang. This looks good. Really happy with the way this one turned out. I think they'll, I think they'll be plenty happy on this. Sweet. Oh, let me go grab that box too. By the way, delicate cycle with your undies. <laughs> but um. So I was sent a special package. Uh, every once in a while, Tint Whiz does something. So um, I just full disclosure, I haven't used this, and I took a look at it, and it seems really nice. I'll give my thought, my first impressions on it. I don't know if we'll actually, we'll probably bust it out sometime and maybe give it a little try. Um, but this is just going to be kind of a little special unboxing here. So this was this is by a company called Slinger Tools, and sticker here just dropped out. Tint Wiz. Uh, Tint Wiz sent these out to people. So Tint Wiz does a little special edition uh, with a lot of things. You guys know the tri edges um, and towels and coffee mugs and so many other Tint Wiz things. So they threw in a bunch of stickers. So this is another one of those side collabs that they did with Slinger Tools. Um, I think you can find it at slingertool.com. I don't remember for sure, but something like that. Um, so we have a nice hard case. I don't think this was made specifically for it, but we have a nice Tint Whiz edition microfiber here. This is pretty cool. Uh, but they threw in a shorty handle and an orange crush. So you know, this already, Costs a little bit of money to send out. They have a business card here. Virtual Tinter. Ah, yeah, here we go. Slinger Tools. Good. They put a little business card. Oh, this is a, this is a hefty card, too, by the way. Uh, SlingerTools.com. Wow, that's not going to focus there. So SlingerTools, with an S at the end, .com. 
Um, and then this is what it is. I got another tri-edge, tint with addition tri-edge. So this thing just looks impressive. Let me grab a uh, screwdriver too. <laughs> you have an extra handle in case one, another one grows legs and walks away. Yeah, so let's set up the squeegee handle here really quick. Cause I've watched the live stream. The live stream happened a while back now, but it, it's from another tinter that makes his own molds. So I'm gonna get this set up here. So we're just gonna put the blade in here. We're gonna tighten down these screws. If you don't know how to do this, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but this is actually a custom molded uh, handle and it comes in two versions. So what's cool about it is that you take your squeegee blade and I don't know if I have it the right way. I don't. Okay. No. Yep. And then you put it this way and then it sets in here. And so it's meant to go on your belt. So it's more of like a holstery dealy, right? So you're kind of what you could put it on your tool belt too, but it's the purpose, sorry, the microphone. Uh, but the purpose of it is to kind of just keep a few tools on hand, like kind of the essential things that you need in a lightweight setup that just clips onto a belt. So slinger, tools, it's very like Western inspired. So, and then you just lock it back in, cool. Um, they put a little hole in here so you can grab out a tri-edge and then that just slides right back in there. And then knife, red dot knife in the front. How cool is that? So it's pretty sick. And then, so it's got slinger on it, and then tint whiz, tint whiz edition on the back, and it's in the tint whiz purple. So um, it's solid. This thing is very solid. So what concerns me a little bit, honestly, is this feels like it would knock into the paint so be careful if you get one of these things. It is hefty, um, but it's, you know, for the right person, it would be really cool to just like, you know, you just got your stuff there. And... So I don't know if this is gonna be anybody's primary carry, but that wasn't the purpose of it. So it was just a really cool made thing. Um, and if anybody, if it, it's for that right person, let me pull up the uh, Slinger Tools. Um, uh, site didn't work. What did I do wrong? That is why we check first. Those visual t S L I N G E R tool. Slinger tool. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the site. Maybe it's on a different URL shop now. Hang on, let me let me check this out here. Okay, here, I'll bring it up. So we got desktop. I don't know what's going on with the site, uh, slingertool.com. There's a problem with the homepage right now. Um, so I don't know. I just kind of Googled it and I found it. But this is what it looks like normally. And then they have two different versions. So they got the one with the shorty handle, and then they have one uh, with a turbo. And then you can order them loaded and un unloaded, which is kind of cool too. So this one's a little slimmer, but not everybody likes the turbo, so that's why you would have the other one. So big thank you uh, to both Slinger Tools and uh, TintWiz for sending this thing out. Um, I may pull this out and use it, but it looks super cool, so I'm going to leave it sitting on a shelf, too. And it's just kind of one of those, like, woo, and uh, we might put this, this to use here sometime soon. So just want to say shout out and big, big thank you. So now you guys know what, 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 what came in the mail. It's very handy for mobile. So... hard part for me is that it's going up against this. This is, if we're being honest, 
weighted similarly, even with the tools right now. Um, and this, I, I like this tool belt a lot. Uh, it's not a super wide one, it's smaller. Um, you have the fusion handle. Um, you got spots for knives, shank. You got two pockets. So this is made for, this, was, this is the Avery tool belt. Uh, it was made for vinyl wrappers, but it's great for window tint because we carry very similar things. So it's got two hook pockets if you use two squeegees. And uh, this thing has been going strong for probably about three or four years now. So you get a lot of use out of it too. So I'm really, really happy with this one. So that's where like, this is like 40 to 60 bucks and this one's like 100. So, but like you can't, mm. this is made by a tinner. Uh, it's very unique, very cool. So it's kind of hard to put that rough price tag directly on them, but that's kind of what you're going up against for like a daily carry. Um, but this isn't quite designed to be that way. So super cool, super unique. Bippity bop. Where's my, uh, where's my windows here? Oh, there's my chat. Is it metal? That's a good question. Uh, no, it's not. It's like a heavy, I don't know what it is exactly, but it's molded. So he, I remember in the live stream they talked about like he makes his molds. Um, it's like a resin or something that he pours in and then sands it down and paints them all. Primary carry, oh hell no, definitely that's for your secondary. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How's the new heat gun? Uh, we actually did a time comparison. It was 40 seconds slower. <laughs> We're gonna use the fusion one in the next one though. Alrighty, um, so I think at this point, I gotta let them know that their vehicle's done because 10, Montola. Yeah, I gotta let them know that they're all done. Hopefully they're not waiting up front or whatever. So <laughs> I'm gonna shout out some super chats here and then we're gonna end the stream. Next stream should, actually might be tomorrow. I forgot, we're here on Tuesdays now. Uh, my dashboard. YouTube, why do you make this so annoying? Okay, so thank you uh, to the Super Chats. We only had a couple of them today, but I do appreciate them, of course. Uh, I just, uh, it's so fun doing these streams. So big shout out to both Fast M and Swole Gang uh, for both the Super Chats today. Um, much appreciated, and thank you guys for hanging out. I mean, it wouldn't be fun without just having you guys to, uh, to talk to all day uh, while we stream. So probably stream tomorrow. I gotta check the schedule, but we'll have another stream here pretty soon. Uh, if not tomorrow, then Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, I just gotta look at it. It's second week since I've uh, been able to stream here consistently, so this will be cool. Swally Gang super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. One Hell more yeah, super more chat. Streams. Zoom in on the windshield too. Okay, we'll do that. Oh, yeah, we'll do that real quick. There you go. It just. Bye. <laughs> it's hard to tell just from that angle, but that's what it looks like. But Swole Gang with the five, with another five. Thank you so much. Hell yeah, more streams. I, I'm glad you like a man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. What a, what a good note to end on. All right, I will see you guys later. Thank you all for hanging out. Goodbye.